Hello everyone, thanks for joining. We'll just be waiting a few minutes for coach to join us and get started. Morning, everyone. We're just gathering. All right. Good morning. Morning, Coach Burt. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing this morning? Great. Thank you. We are just gathering. I'm, I'm waiting for... Uh, definitely some more of our partners to join us. Okay. So we might want to give them just a minute or two. Super. Get one thing here. And feel free to turn your cameras on, folks. I like seeing smiley faces. Smiley faces and friendly folks, right? Makes such for a great experience. There you go, Hal. Bring a little positive energy to old coach this morning. That's what I like seeing, folks. Positive energy and smiling faces. Wayne, what part of the world are you in? You seem like a positive gentleman. Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Oh, nice. Yeah, very snowy. Uh, it is It is about 37 degrees here in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, cool. That's where I'm at, out in Nashville. But I have a lot of, uh, I, I have a lot of uh, um, clients up on the East Coast. I think it's the Southern accent. <laughs> I remember the first time I spoke in Boston and Pennsylvania, I was so nervous that my Southern accent would not go over very well up there. It actually went, actually people bought more books up there than they did in the South. I was like, man, this is good. I should be coming up there more often. I learned years ago that sometimes when you have an accent, people lean in and listen a little bit more closely. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
I don't have much of one, but people I worked with, I used to work with a lot of Brits and, and some Germans and Austrians. Yep. Yes. And I would notice in a meeting because just enough accent to where people would have to kind of tweak their ear a little bit. Oh, yes. Maybe that's yeah. what's working for you. Like, <laughs> well, I didn't get a TV show once because they said they, they, they didn't like my Southern accent and I wasn't tall enough. And I said, uh, I don't know if I, I don't know how I solve those two problems. Right. I don't know how I fix those two. So I guess I just won't get the show. Seems like you're doing all right. Yeah. It was a turnaround show. You come in, they wanted me to, you know, be very dramatic, turn businesses around, kind of like a John Taffert in Bar Rescue. Right. They want to know what I would do. Would I make people cry? Would I, would I, would I create a lot of drama? Would I, you know, basic television? What makes for good television? Yeah, all the above. <clears throat> well, I am excited to check out what you have to say because, you know, I've sold most of my life and sometimes you get really stuck in your ways. And um, I've had some good next to you deals, but not in some time. And I see a need for that more, now more than ever. Mm. And uh, I'd love to learn some. And the hardest thing for, for me, and I think for most salespeople, is getting that first meeting and getting that uh, getting some attention. Okay, good. Uh, That's good to know. World, you know. So well, I have the unique benefit of being a Nextiva customer, as well as a coach to a lot of the top Nextiva people, and uh, so I've got the insight of of a, of a running a small business, and um, you know, expanding and what needs we have, what 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 our team needs, how we view technology. How, how to better sell the technology, you know, from a busy entrepreneur that's out there in the world. If you were trying to get my attention today while I'm trying to run, you know, multiple businesses, do big real estate plays, you know, it's hard. And, and if you don't, if you can't get the meeting and you don't have my attention, you can't sell me on how good it is. And once you get it, how do you use it? Do you use it to its full utility? Because once you get the system, there's all kinds of of vultures coming around saying they got a better system, <laughs> right? And you can save the money and you can do this and we can do this. And so it's interesting from a business person's <clears throat> perspective on, you know, how do you sell to the busy entrepreneur? How do you show them that you could help them? So we'll, we'll, we'll certainly get into that. Is there anything anybody else on here would like to cover? I'll talk about, I'll talk a little bit about that. I'll talk a little bit about, you know, how you get in the door, how you, articulate your value, more important, how you follow up. Because to me, that is a big piece of the equation. How do you stay in a person's face? And how do you, how do you overcome their objections? How do you sell the value? How do you sell the full utility of what you have? Because we had very, very, just yesterday, we had a phone dialing system make a pitch to us that said, man, you don't even need Nextiva for our system. You just use your phone, you use your cell phones and a headset. You don't even need them. You know, and so that's that, that's the kind of real competition that is happening every day out there in the marketplace that you really have to understand. And until you understand it from the other person's perspective, the person you're selling to, you know, you don't even know. I always like to say every day somebody, you know, somebody's bait is getting a little bit closer to your fish. You know, every day somebody's out there trying to, to get a piece of their piece of the pie and small business owners. Uh, are looking at that pie every day and seeing how can they cut costs, how can they make more money, how can they generate more profit, how can they, how can they, you know, and to me, you have to show, if you were selling me, you have to show me how you can help us make money or save money. And that has a lot to do with my personality style because I'm a high D. So I'm a very direct person. And I like to know if you're going to sell to me, you got to show very quickly how you're an asset. You're going to bring something to the equation, energy, time, money, creativity, I can make more calls. I can close more deals. We can make more money, but that's my personality style. So, you know, with, with different personality styles, you've got to, you got to feed them different information and that's very important. Uh, so we'll get into, we'll get into all those things. Anybody else? You asked, anybody yeah. Else so cover can you hear me? Yes. Okay. This is Sarah Freeman. Um, I want, I have no problem getting in the door, making friends with people. Um, I'm new to the services side. I came out of owning a company that, um, for 15 years that, that people came to me. So I didn't need to approach them and start the sales conversation because they already knew that, that they needed my, my products. 
So I'm having a hard time initiating a sales conversation. I'm having great to get in the door, making friends with people, having dialogue. Okay. How do I take that into, let's talk about your services? Yeah, because if you're not careful, you get stuck in the friend zone. Right, and, exactly. Yeah, and the friend zone is, I like you, I'll talk to you, I'll have lunch with you, but, but I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not doing business with you. And just remember this, as we talk about this, I have a core philosophy, money changes hands when problems are solved. Okay, the bigger the problem, the more money people pay to solve that problem. So when you're when you're initiating that conversation, uh, I use a formula. I initiate, I disarm, I locate a problem, I offer a compelling solution, and I push people to something in the future. That could be a strategy session and, or some way that I could articulate how I can be an asset to them. And it has a lot to do with how I follow up, Sarah. And I'm going to teach, you know, I wrote a book called Million Dollar Follow-Up. Almost all the concepts I talk about, I've written a book on because I've got 16 books out in the market. So what I do is I take a sliver of something, I write a book on it, and that's a philosophy. So I've written books in how you prospect, how you follow up, how you close people, how you stay motivated when you're, when you hit a ceiling, you know, all those things. But the follow-up to me, it sounds like you've got the chemistry part down. You sounds like to me, you've disarmed them so they're comfortable with you. But you got to locate a problem and you got to push them to some compelling solution. And then the way you follow up is going to be very critical. You got to keep hammering home uh, how your solution can help them make money or save money. And a lot of people follow up like this. Do you have any questions? Uh, I was just checking in. I'm just touching base. Are you ready to make a decision? And none of those calls a person to make a buying decision. Okay. If I was just thinking about you, Cody, there's two specific things I was thinking. And there's two ways I think I can help you get a lift of maybe a half a million more dollars. There's three ways I can help you be more efficient, which is going to do this. There's two ways that I think we can add something to the equation. There's five people I just worked with that increased their top line by 20% by using our technology. Like every time you follow up, you got to make the business owner stop and think, this is an asset to me. This is an asset to me. I need to do something with this because there's so many things we're being sold every day by so many different people it becomes overwhelming, becomes confusing. And, uh, and so you got to be in people's face every single day. <clears throat> Joe, now one question I have for you is how many times will these folks be on here with me? Um, most of the folks have registered for all six sessions. Um, and if you haven't, um, you know, I invite you to, we will um, record them if you're registered and don't get to attend live. But obviously you can see that attending live and be able to interact with coach and ask your questions is, you know, ideal. So um, if you haven't registered for the rest of the sessions, please do. So yeah, these folks will be with you for six sessions. So okay. this is um, the first of, of many. Right. Well, dang, they're on the move in plan. I didn't know there's going to be moving in with me, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Might as well move in, move to Nashville with me and get a spare bedroom. That's a lot. Brianna, you think you can handle me for six full sessions? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, Joe, if you're ready to get started, I see 44 people on here, 85 registered. Hey, there's 40, 41 that slip in today, not going to get the coaching they need. I know, I know. So yeah, absolutely. Let's go ahead and get started. And, um, uh, you know, everyone, if you, if you want to join via camera, like coach said, he loves to interact with you. Um, but I understand if you're <laughs> not able to do that this morning and, um, thanks so much for, um, joining us, all the partners who were able to join us this morning. And thank you so much for, uh, coach Burt for being able to do this for us. Yeah, really absolutely. excited. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate our relationship. Appreciate you constantly putting me in front of new people. Here's one of my philosophies, folks. You don't need more money. You need more people. People have the money, right? And so when you're selling, you think you need more money. No, you need more people. I was coaching a real estate agent down in Fort Lauderdale today. He's 26 years old. He, don't, he, doesn't know, he doesn't know anybody in Fort Lauderdale. And I said, man, what you need to do is you need to get out there and be known. The key to the many is to the one. You know, one right person in Fort Lauderdale. When I went to Houston, Texas, I started coaching one person in Houston. I didn't know one person in Houston. There's 6 million people in Houston. I was, I was like, I don't know anybody in Houston. I met one person. One guy introduced me to a lot of wealthy people. And next thing you know, I became the coach of all those people. And the next thing you know, we were generating hundreds of thousands of dollars by knowing one person. Okay. The key to the many is to the one. So over the next six months, I'm going to be coaching you through 
a unique system that I've created over the last uh, 12 to 15 years by coaching some of the top business people in the world. I was, uh, so you know, a women's basketball coach for a decade of my life. So you see this big gaudy championship ring on my finger. It's where me working 80 hours a week for 12 years. And I took a place that had never won and turned it into a national powerhouse. And people were constantly asking me how I was winning. How did I get the kids to play that hard? Because of that, I started writing books. I am now on book number 17. Uh, so I started writing books about how I was winning, about how I activated the prey drive in people, about how I built winning cultures, about how I kept people motivated. And pretty soon, business people began to call me and say, will you come speak to my people? And I would go speak to their teams. This was Dale, State Farm, National Health Care, Cumulus Broadcasting, Vanderbilt University. These are big name people. And I would go out and speak to their people for an hour. And they began to say, uh, can we hire you to be our coach? And I said, no, Wayne, this is back when I wasn't very smart. I'm like, no, man, I'm coaching these kids. I'm coaching high school kids. I love coaching kids. And Dell Computers paid me more in an hour after speaking than I made in a whole month. And it was at that moment that I said, surely to goodness, somebody else would care about them kids other than me. Right, Elizabeth? <laughs> and although I love them kids, somebody else would come along and love them as much as I did. I know they will. Okay. But I stayed for six more years. And I, I won championships, and then I retired to start a business coaching uh, company. And as luck would have it, I spoke at a Nextiva convention uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona, about a year ago. And many of the Nextiva people around the country, country hired me to be their coach because they, Wayne, said the same thing you did. I've had some big deals. I've hit some big licks. I've been real good. But maybe, maybe I've kind of reached a state that I could play at a higher level. I could play at a higher frequency. I could close more deals. I could make more money. I could do this in a better way. And so over the last 15 years, through me coaching a lot of top business people, I've figured out that they have six common missing structures, okay? And I'm gonna, over the next six months, I'm gonna share with you those missing structures. Now, here's the good news, Michelle. We're gonna find areas of your business that you're losing money in. OK, and once we find those areas, we're going to fill those areas and you're going to get an increase in your business. Does that sound like a good plan. OK, uh, yep. Sounds fantastic. Now, I'm coaching probably I'm going to say if you put them all together, 40, 50, 60, 70, maybe 70 next diva people right now. OK, and across across the country <laughs> and I'm looking at their business and I am a next diva customer. So uh I run about a, a $6 million coaching company. We're doing about 500,000 a month and selling and selling our services. That's 25,000 a day, 125,000 a week. So that goes to show you uh, what, what level of business I'm running. And we have, we're building call centers and we have employees and we're using the system. So I'm going to talk as if I'm a customer or a prospect of yours. And if I'm coaching you, so I get the benefit of that. Now, today we're going to get into something. I'm going to give you these six missing structures. So if you're taking notes, I want you to write these down. And I'm actually going to be going through a little bit of a PowerPoint. We also will have the replay. But I want you to give me some feedback when I go through these areas. There are six common missing structures of every business. Number one, you do not have the prey drive to go out and pursue the sale. Prey drive is an instinct. We're going to cover that today. Prey drive is prevalent. That's P-R-E-Y-D-R-I-V-E. -E. Prey drive is prevalent in animals, specifically a dog. A dog has a prey drive. And it is the dog's ability to stalk, capture, and kill prey. The salesperson has the ability to see it and pursue it. See potential, see opportunity, see it in the mind or optically with the eyes and have the persistence and intensity to pursue it. And through the next six months, I'm going to activate your prey drive like you can't imagine. If it's gone dormant, dead, latent, complacent, bored, stuck, stale, in a rut, trust me, with me coaching you, there is no way that your prey drive will not be activated. And that is really the first part of selling anything, is the, the, the ability to initiate, to take an idea and do something, to call people, to follow up like crazy, to go for the sale, to get out of the friend zone. You need prey drive, right? And so today I'm going to kind of talk about what that prey drive is, how to find your activator. And if you got a team of people, how to activate their prey drive. 
We will then move to session number two, which will change everything for you. And it is called the explanation of service. How do you explain your value when you get in front of a legitimate prospect? And do you do it in a world-class way that is compelling, that builds energy, that builds excitement, that builds enthusiasm? Number three, how do you work a selling system? Meaning, how do you prospect every day? I'm going to put groups. You're going to hear me use a vernacular called the Legacy Selling System. This is a book I wrote. And most of my books are free at my website right now, coachbert.com. You pay the shipping and handling, which is 10 bucks, and I'll ship it right to your house. Okay, so legacy selling is how I attack a day. How do I prospect? How do I have a hit list every day, a farm club every day, a top 25 every day, red zones, showcase events? How do I work a database? I'm going to teach you how I generate 3,000 leads every 90 days. Okay, which is why I need that call center, right, Hal? If you had 3,000 leads, but you got need a bunch of people calling these folks, okay? Then I'm going to teach you how to follow up like an animal. I'm going to teach you how to follow up like a true professional. And I wrote a book on this called Million Dollar Follow-Up. Okay, Million Dollar Follow-Up. We're then going to move to how do you extract referrals? How do you get 5.7 referrals out of your current client base? How do you engage with your clients? I do not believe in customer service. I believe in customer engagement. You're getting paid to serve the customer. The referrals do not come from service and customers. Referrals come from engaging with customers. Okay. And then I'm going to finish with a concept called person of interest. How do you become known? A known quantity in the marketplace. How do you market to where you're a must have versus a nice to have? How do you build a transformational relationship? Okay. To where you are needed in the marketplace. Okay. And I'm telling you folks, if you're not calling on your current clients, engaging with them, building rapport, I just told you, I got a call yesterday from a person with a dialing system. He said, man, you don't need anything but a cell phone. It's all web-based. We can make calls for you. We can pump it out. It's going to save you money and make more phone calls, coach. Now, why, why would you need that expensive phone system? Here's the deal. Every day, there are people attacking your customers. And if you don't think they are, you've lost your mind. It's a competitive marketplace. We got to protect the customers we have, engage with them. But we should want to engage with them anyway. 98% of people never call the customer back once they sell them something. There's no chance of getting five to set five to seven referrals if you never engage with your current client. I'll give them out next Steve a rep, a credit. The dude engages with me like crazy. Okay. He engages with me. He shows up. He's in my coaching program. He helps me get referrals. He's trying to help me build my business. He's a great customer service rep. He's got a good heart. Like he engages with makes me, makes it hard for me to fire him, Joe. It's hard for me to fire people. I like it's easy for me to fire people. I don't like, and I never hear from them and they cost me money. So, so let's talk about prey drive and I'm going to share my screen <clears throat> and anything you guys want to talk about throughout the course of this, uh, throughout the course of this, then please let me know. I'd be happy to talk about anything. This is your time. And so today we're going to talk about how to build high prey drive environments. And this is really the initiating point. Uh, I, I want to tell you where this concept came from because this is the book I'm writing right now called How to Flip the Switch. The book is called Flip the Switch. It's published by McGraw-Hill. will be in all the bookstores and airports around the world in 2022. And this came to me because I was at a workshop with a former uh, Vietnam veteran that was in the war dog division of the, of the military. And his job was to go out ahead of the inf infantry with an animal, with a dog every morning in the Vietnam war. And the dog's job was to sniff out bombs, booby traps and ambushes. Any day you think it's tough selling phone systems and technology. I want you to imagine waking up in the middle of a jungle with no electricity, with nobody to help you. Just you and an animal going out every single morning. Imagine the psychology of that. And he kept talking about the dog having a prey drive. The dog had a prey drive, the prey drive. And I'm sitting there listening to it. And I'm thinking, prey, I've never heard that concept before because I didn't have a dog. And I'm thinking, prey drive, what is prey drive? So I look it up. While, while he's talking, I look it up on my iPad. And it said that uh, the dog's prey drive was the ability to stalk, capture, and kill prey. And I'm sitting there as a coach of 28 years. I started coaching when I was 15. I became a head coach at 21. 
I was coaching big time people at 31. I've coached some of the top people in the world. And, and I'm sitting there and going with my brain. Devices. I'm sitting there going, everybody has a prey drive. Humans have a prey drive. And it is the human's ability <clears throat> to stalk, capture, and kill prey. So prey drive is in each of us. It's what I've been doing my whole life. There is a difference between motivating you and activating something inside of you. Once I activate the prey drive in you, you are going to wake up every day and you are going to pursue your potential. You're going to pursue growing your business. You're not going to be satisfied and complacent with where you are. You're going to be grateful, but dissatisfied. You're going to want to play at a higher frequency, folks. Okay. And I used the example of my wife. My wife did drugs every single day from 21 to 24 years old. I did not know her during that period of her life. Uh, she, her company Verizon sent her to one of my workshops at 30 years old. She said in the very back of the, of the uh, workshop, she took notes like crazy. Uh, she came up to me after the, the, the workshop and said, hey, nobody has ever talked to me about any of these things. Uh, potential, prey drive, any of those things. Nobody has ever talked to me about this. Uh, and you're the first person who's ever talked to me about this. And she's like, how do I learn more about this concept? How do I learn more about my potential? How do I play at a higher frequency? And she said, would you like to, I'd like to meet with you and talk about it. And she was real pretty and I was single. And I said, sure, I'm available to meet right now. Would you like to meet, talk about it right now? She said, no, I want to take the book. I want to go back and read it. And I want to come back and I want to meet with you. And she came back two weeks later at 30 years old. And she had ripped the book up, highlighted it. And she said, I am serious about my potential. Nobody's ever talked to me about potential. Nobody's ever pushed me. My parents never told me to, to do any of these things. And you have activated something inside of me. Okay. Now, this is the interesting part. We went on to get married. We now have two beautiful children. And anytime that we, uh, she gets down on me or upset with me, I remind her that she only paid $50 to have a pretty good husband. That's all they paid for the workshop. She didn't pay 5,000 bucks. She paid 50 bucks. Okay. Now my wife is writing her own books. Now she's running millions of dollars of our real estate. Now she's found her voice and calling in life. Now she's doing big things. What happened to her? What happened to her is her prey drive was activated. So, so if I activate the prey drive in you, what does that look like? What does that look like? Okay. Prey drive is this. In the human, it is the human's ability. It's the instinctual ability to see something with the eyes. Optically, I see it. I woke up this morning. There's people I was thinking about I could help with my services. I see it. I think about it. My dreams, my ambitions, my imagination. I see it with my eyes. Or, or I see it in my mind. And I have the persistence and intensity to pursue it. How many of you know somebody right now that you need to be calling to try to get them into your services? Raise your hand if you know somebody right now. When I said that, right? Here's the deal. The prey drive is an instinct. It's an instinct to pick up the phone and call them. It's an instinct to send a text message. It's an instinct to say, I can help them. It's an instinct to follow up. How many of you have people in your red zone right now? These are people that have indicated interest in your product or service, but they just need a good push across the finish line. They're scared of something. Raise your hand. Prey drive is having the guts to pick up the phone and call them and say, look, I know you're scared. I know this seems like a lot of money. I know you need to do it, but man, I, I got to give it a better effort on, on making sure I can articulate my value so I can help you. Here's what I say to people, Joe Hauser. I can't help you till you commit. Man, but once you commit, I'm not going to let you fail. This weekend, I shot a two-minute video for every person that had indicated interest in my service. And it said, if you're considering hiring me as a coach, watch this video. And it's two minutes of exactly what I would do if they hired me to be their coach. So there's no confusion. There's no randomness, right? Prey drive is instinct, folks. That's just why I put in here. It's a blink. It's like, boom, blink. Like why I'm telling you this right now, why I'm talking to you about this. Every night I sit down and map my goals out for the next day. Guess what? There's people I need to be calling. Look, 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 watch what I'm doing. As I'm teaching you this, I'm writing down people I need to be calling to close, right? I'm going back to people. Look at that. I can sit here all day long just while I'm talking about it. And I'm thinking of people. Look, I'm sitting there just making up names right now. Boom, 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 boom. Right? Like there's, like, like there's no shortage of leads. There's a shortage of courage. Right? There's no shortage of, of, of money. You don't need more money. You need more people. You know? You don't need more money. You need more people. The people have the money. Contacts equals contracts, folks. Networks equals net worth. I believe that. 
So I want you to, uh, when it comes to prey drive, I want you to type in the comments where you fall off the wagon. Do you fall off the wagon in an activation of that prey drive? That means every day getting up, I'm going to show you how I activate mine by eight o'clock every morning. Because sometimes I wake up and my prey drive is not activated. Can you believe that, Elizabeth? Sometimes even me, the guy who writes the books, wakes up and I'm tired and I'm exhausted. And I woke up at 5.30 one morning. I told my wife, I don't feel like doing this today. And uh, I don't have my motivation going. And my wife rolled over and she said, uh, then watch one of your videos. <laughs> I thought, okay, I see how it's going to be. But I watched one of my videos and guess what? I motivated myself by watching one of my own videos. So here's my point, folks. I want, I want to put these in three categories. Where do you fall off the wagon? Is it activation of prey drive? Is it persistence of prey drive? Is it intensity of prey drive? And let me give a definition of those. Activation, switch is flipped. Persistence, I have the ability to prospect every day with a discipline, with a toughness. I've got a long obedience in the same direction. I prospect two hours a day. I follow up seven to 15 touches. Okay, and the follow-up. I'm, I'm actively engaging with my clients. I prospect in the morning. I solve the world's problems in the afternoon. That is persistence. I have the willingness to suck the sour to get to the sweet. I got the ability to get up every day and do something I don't want to do because I know I got to do it to hit my goals. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to hit my goals. Okay, number three. Number three is intensity. And intensity is veracity. It's attack. You can sense my intensity. Like I'm going somewhere, I'm doing something. I'm not in a static position, I'm dynamic. And, and I believe you're not selling technology, you're selling a belief, you're selling an energy, you're selling a future, you're selling a solution. You're not selling technology, you're not selling a phone system, folks. I can get a phone system anywhere, by the way. What, what, I'm, what you're selling me is through a relationship with you, my life is gonna be way better off than it is right now. Everybody see that? You're gonna enhance, you're gonna add something to my life. So where do you, fall off the wagon. I want you to type it into the comments. Is it activation? Is it persistence? Is it intensity? Okay, I'm seeing intensity. I'm seeing activation. Oh, I'm seeing a lot, a lot more activations than normal. Persistence. Okay. Persistence. Intensity. Okay, good. All right. <clears throat> okay, good. This gives me some good market data. Now, I'm going to show you how to activate your prey drive by 8 a.m. every morning, but you got to do what I tell you to do. How's that sound? Okay. Wayne, you got to get out 6 a.m. in the morning. You got to walk around Lancaster, Pennsylvania with shorts and a t-shirt on in the freezing cold. Will that activate your prey drive? <laughs> now, here's, what, here, here's the deal. Just joking, Wayne. You don't have to do that, although that would wake you up. Now, here, here's what I want you looking at, okay? Here's what I want you looking at. This is very important. Why push this hard, Michelle? Why push this hard, Sarah? Why go this hard? Why, why try to exert this force and energy? Notice what it says right here as it relates to this concept of the animal. When you think about prey drive, what are we pursuing? Why, why would we push this hard? Is it to just make more money? Although that's nice, it's not actually the reason. In the animal, and I didn't catch this the first time around when I was working on the research for this book. Actually, there is no greater motivation for the animal than the mere ability to pursue the prey. How many of you guys have ever pursued a dream, hit it, and was bored with it? I remember when my business made a million dollars. Um, the first time only 4% of small businesses will make a million. That's the, my goal for each one of you to get to a million of revenue. I think I celebrated Brianna for about 17 seconds. Took me X number of years to get there, celebrated for 17 seconds. And then I said, how do we get to 2 million? Then once you get to 2 million, how do you get to 3 million? The night I won a championship, Michelle, I was bored. It's like, how do we go back and win another one? You know why? Because capturing the prey is not the reward. Like you think just making a sale is the reward. No, making a sale is not the reward. The ability to wake up and pursue the prey is the reward. There is no greater reward than the ability. See, I got to sell my sales team on your ability to get in here every day and pursue your potential is very important. So for you, it's not a reward, the money piece. Maybe you're doing it for that. Maybe you're not. I don't know. But, but really, the reason you're doing it is to pursue your potential. Okay, so I want you to think of it like this. 
you're at A right now. Okay, you're at A right now. Okay, and you're trying to get to B. Okay. Okay, you're at A, that's your current position. You're at B, you're trying to get to B. Look at what's in between A and B. There's strategy and execution. Either your desire to move toward B, B needs to be a tangible outcome you would like to drive in a 12 month cycle as measured in 30 day windows. My B is $6 million. That means in my coaching business, I have to sell uh, 500,000 every 30 days. Okay, in January, I hit 432,000. So I was off my goals by $68,000. That means in February, I got to hit 568 to be back on track. Everybody see that? Okay, I break that down into a, a, a weekly number. That's 125,000 on a five-day work week. It's 25,000 a day. I want to know where I am every single day. B has to be tangible. It has to be something I can measure. It has to be something I look at and think about every day. Now, if you, if you know me, I sit down every night and I map out, I actually write out my, my goals for the next day. <clears throat> and I sit down on my iPad and I map out, I, I physically write it out. And you, how do you physically write it out? He calls it input in the subconscious mind. I am closing 25,000 per day. I am generating 500,000 uh, 500, this month. I am the top business coach in America. I am a person of interest that people are counting on to show up. I, I physically write that up every single night before I go to bed. What I'm doing is I'm imprinting in the subconscious mind. How many of you believe that when you're very clear on your targets and you tell the brain, you actually hit those targets? I could give you example after example after example, folks. If your B is, I don't know, it's qualitative, I can't measure it. Every one of you over the next six months need to get real clear on what your B is. And B is a single tangible outcome you would like to drive in a 12 month cycle as measured in 30 day windows. My, okay, so the question becomes, if my goal is 25,000 today, what is the highest value of my time? Okay, very important. This separates me out between what's high value and low value. I am a revenue generating maniac which means I focus all my attention all day, every day on the production of revenue. And I categorize these out between high value and low value. A high value activity is a money generating activity. A low value activity is any activity you participate in the day that's got nothing to do with producing money. Talking about whether Tom Brady's gonna win a Super Bowl, low value activity. Okay, talking about what happened this weekend, what's going on in the weather, what's going on in the news, okay, what's President Biden doing, okay, yesterday he passed the law that said men can, men can play women's sports, okay, that's an interesting one, isn't it, <laughs> okay, who cares, okay, I ain't got time to fool with that, folks, because what I got to do is wake up every day and feed my business, okay, and what I got to do so I know the difference between money generating and non-money generating, so let me ask a question right here, how many people on here are prospecting a minimum of two hours a day every day, okay, anybody, okay, okay, good, thank you, Elizabeth, okay, if you're not prospecting every day for two hours, oh, and I do not like um, mixing activities together, meaning I do not like servicing clients and prospecting at the same time, doing accounting and prospecting at the same time, scheduling and doing something at the same time. I like Neapolitan ice cream. It's clearly delineated between chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. You don't mix it together, folks. Okay, so here's what we do. Uh, at, at 8.30 every morning, I meet with my team to activate their prey drive. We actually film my morning meetings if you ever want to see one. And what my number one deal is activate the prey drive. From 9 to 11, we do nothing but prospect for new money. Sales people go sale. Operations people go service customers. My money collector goes and collects the money. That's all they do. I don't want them talking to each other, looking at each other, flirting with each other, okay? What I want them doing is on nothing but money generating activity because guess what I'm trying to do, Wayne? I'm trying to get to a big number, man. I'm trying to get to 6 million and to get to 6 million, I got to sell 25,000 a day and to get 25,000 a day, Joe, I got to call on a lot of people. So I do not have time for low value activity, okay? Everybody, everybody with me here, okay? Now, let's go back to our screen and let's see and then I'll stop in just a second. Is everybody clear about their B right now? Is everybody clear about what their B is? Okay, and did you hit it in January? 
There's no value in setting a target if you're not going to if you're not interested in hitting the target. So I really want to encourage you that every day you need to know what your A is and you know what your B is. Now, if you become complacent, satisfied, bored, stuck in a rut, stationary, it's for one reason: your your basic needs are met. Okay. Now, here's my theory: satisfied needs never motivate people; only unsatisfied needs. The reason I keep my prey drive activated and reactivated is I set very big goals and targets. And when I set very big goals and targets, that motivates me, okay? We become basically a complacent nation. And the complacent nation is we're comfortable. Now you say, why are we comfortable? This is Maslow's hierarchy of needs, okay? Basically what he's saying here is if your physiological needs are met, safety needs, love and belonging, esteem, then you try to move up here to what's called self-actualization. Self-actualization is you are deeply interested in your own human potential. You are not in this for the money, you're in this for the, for the, for the self-satisfaction that you have from going out into the marketplace and producing at a very high level for you, okay? Now, I actually have a counter theory on finding your why. A lot of people are going to say you got to find your why before you do something big in the world, okay? Uh, I actually believe the opposite. I've been coaching people for 28 years. I actually believe your purpose finds you when you pursue something. I don't believe you sit in a room and find your purpose, you find your why, and then you go out and do something big. If I ask the top five people I'm coaching right now what their purpose is, they probably couldn't tell me. They, they, this Man, they're interested, in, they're interested in their potential. They're interested in playing at a higher level. They're interested. Now, when you get to this level, folks, you're operating at such a freakish level that other people are going to want to do business with you. You're not going to have to chase, convince, beg, manipulate. They're going to want to partner with you because you bring something incredibly valuable to the table. So let's go back to the let's go back to those uh, high school basketball players that I coached. Moms and dads would bring their kids to me at 14 years old, and they all said the same thing: "Coach, my daughter's got a lot of potential. Potential is the idea of kinetic energy that is stored until utilized." has to be activated by something, right? And I would say to them, what does she need? What do you think she needs? And they would say she needs confidence, which is the memory of success. She needs discipline, which is a derivative of the word disciple. She needs accountability, which is to be held accountable to something. She needs structure. And I said, we're going to provide that. She needs focus. She needs a good attitude. She needs motivation. And I would say, okay, we're going to provide every one of those things for her. Now, let me ask you a question, mom and dad. You're telling me your daughter's got potential. And they would say, yes, sir. She just needs a good coach. And I would say, well, I've got a tough question for you uh, that you may or may not like. Is your daughter watching you reach your potential? <laughs> and they would go, oh, coach, I didn't know you're going to be coaching me. And I'm like, I will run your little booty around the parking lot like theirs. Okay, now here's the point, folks. Is it not hypocritical for me to tell my eight-year-old daughter and my eight-month-old son that he's got potential and she's got potential if they're not seeing old pops reach his? Everybody see that? I am so interested in self-actualization of, uh, of getting to the self-actualized level that I wake up every morning and I'm interested. I'm hungry. I'm looking. Who can help me? Who needs to be coaching me? How do I get to the next level? I'm never, I'm, I'm grateful, but I'm dissatisfied. Where I'm playing at small in comparison to my potential, folks. This is the level we got to get to. And this is ultimately why we're trying to activate your prey drive. When the prey drive is activated, selling becomes easy because you're going to get up every single day and you're going to pursue your potential. Now, how do we do this on a consistent basis? How to, because this is the first step. Before I teach you how to sell, I got to really get in. We got to go deep a little bit with each other. And I got to really coach you. This is the whole person. I was scripted by Covey. I was, I was mentored by Covey from age 18 to 25. Covey wrote the seven habits of highly effective people. He introduced a theory called the whole person theory. He said that people are made up of four parts. A body, that's physical. A mind, that's mental. A heart, that's emotional. And a spirit, that's spiritual. Each of these parts produce four different needs, four different dimensions, four different capacities, four different intelligences. What good is it to have skill, that's the body, with no prey drive, that's the heart. What good is it to have drive, that's the heart, with no skill, that's the body. What good is it to have skill with no confidence, that's the spirit. Body, mind, heart, spirit. What good is a salesperson that has a high prey drive, but they don't understand how to sell. They don't understand how to explain their services, how to follow up, how to close a deal, how to get referrals. They've got drive, but no skill. Okay. What good is it to have a lot of confidence with no skill? We refer to that as arrogance. 
<laughs> okay? <laughs> your your self-appraisal is much higher than your market value. If you are not clicking on all four parts of your nature at a high level, it's going to be hard to do what I'm trying to teach you to do, which is play at this freakish, freakish level. Okay? So how do I activate this by 8 a.m. every day? This is my strategy. I'm a faith-based person. So every morning when I wake up, I feed my faith first. That's the spirit. I watch a 20-minute sermon, typically on the way to the gym. I work out for 45 minutes at a high pace with a coach. Okay? I don't believe in working out on your own. I don't believe in working out at your pace. I believe in working out with somebody pushing you to a higher frequency. Okay? I then go home and see my wife and two children, feed my heart. I then listen to something on business. Okay? And you can get all kinds of business stuff at my YouTube channel. And you can, uh, you can get, you can watch me every single morning. Okay. So I feed my spirit. I feed my body. I feed my heart. I feed my mind. And so if I woke up this morning and I didn't feel like selling Tom D or Cody and I wake up and I go, man, I don't feel like getting after it today, Rick Andrews. I just don't have my mojo. By the time I go through this cycle, uh, my prey drive is activated. And if you're not going through this cycle, what's happened is you're getting to work and you're not in a motivated state. You're not ready to sail. And I, I worked out with a Marine. I hired a Marine to be my trainer for a, a couple of years. And I would show up in the morning and he would say, Coach Burt, it's about time you got your mind ready for what your body's about to do, which was his way of saying he was going to force me to do things my mind did not want to do, but my body could do them. So he got me tough. I feed the spirit. I feed the body. I feed the heart. I feed the mind. Okay, this is part of activating the prey drive. Listen, the purpose of the morning meeting, folks, is to activate the prey drive. So this is my morning meeting. That's me at my greatness factory in Nashville. Look at those views. 9,000 square foot, one of the coolest places in Nashville. It's $52 a square foot, my office is. 40,000 a, 40, a month in rent, folks. Okay, that'll, that'll make you commit to selling something, Michelle. Get you an office that's 40,000 a month in rent. Now, here's the deal. This is my, this is my morning meeting. Look at this. We start with a success story. Then I have a prey drive activator. Then I teach my team something. Then we go around the horn on what they're working on. Then we look at our sales number. By 7 p.m. on Sunday night, every person in my on my team, including customer service reps, has to turn into me what they're going to do this week to hit our number. By 4.30 each day, we text in what we did that day and where we are in relationship to our number. I want high touch, high frequency. I want consistency. From 9 to 11, we do nothing but prospect. We break for lunch, nothing heavy. Most people bring their lunch with them. Like, we come back in the afternoon, we solve the world's problems, and we continue to try to hit our number. There is a big difference between a high value and a low value of our time. What I'm trying to do is activate the prey drive in my people. Okay? This is just, a, this is, this is, okay? In my coaching program, I coach people every Monday. Every Monday, I do an accountability call at 430. Okay, if you're interested in that, just email me, coach at coachbird.com. Because imagine having me in your life every single week, pushing you, challenging you, creating some tension in your life. It's that trainer, right? Now, there's the whole pro, okay? I'm going pro in my body. I'm going pro in my mind. I'm going pro in my heart. And I'm going pro in my spirit. I made a decision to go pro, folks. And professionals work this system. All right, now I'm going to finish today by showing you, and I'm, we're going to be using this PowerPoint through through a, through a lot of things. But I'm going to show you how to use negative emotions. But I'm going to I'm going to show you one thing that I think is very critical as we start. Okay, money changes hands when problems are solved. Quit selling technology and start selling a solution. What problems can we solve? I want you to think of it like this: You have a primary skill. I call that your voice. That primary skill is used to solve a problem for another person. What is your primary skill? Are you great at taking something complicated and making it simple? Are you great at connecting and communicating? Are you great at showing somebody how to take a liability and turn it into an asset? I want you to think of it this way. Your skill helps me solve my problem. Your skill helps me solve my problem. When I ask a lot of people what their skills are, unfortunately, they can't tell me. They say, well, I'm a good person. I work hard. Folks, those are not skills. A skill is you can take something incredibly complicated and make it real simple. 
Okay. You can take something incredibly complicated and you can make it real simple. A skill is you can communicate with anybody, anywhere, anytime. A skill is you can overcome an objection. A skill is you can diffuse uh, um, uh, energy with, uh, with uh, positivity or with uh, humor. Those are primary skills. A primary skill is a hard skill that, that can be monetized. Okay. Now let me give an example. Because I don't actually believe you're just selling technology. I believe anybody can sell technology. I believe lots of people are selling technology. I believe what you're selling is a, is a skill set. And what you're selling is a solution to a problem for the small business owner or the big business owner. And that skill has to be an asset, meaning it has to add something. It brings energy. It brings focus. It brings money. Okay. What problem are you solving and for whom? Okay. And if not, you're seen, unfortunately, as a liability. That means you're costing the business owner something. Okay. Now, let me finish today with uh, a, a concept. <coughs> I, I had a young lady in here yesterday from California that owns a pizza shop. And she is the most bubbly, smiling, positive person you can imagine. Here's her problem. She don't know how to make money with this. So she's like, can I, can I make money by being a professional encourager? And I said, I don't know. Can you? Have you been able to make money? I mean, you got a great personality. You got great people skills. You present well. Your problem is you do not know who would pay for your skill. Monetization occurs when a problem is solved. So I said, you got a certain talent. Your ability to connect to people, make people feel good. You bring energy. You got a passion. You got a conscience saying you're supposed to be doing something big. What you're very poor at is you have not figured out who would pay for that skill. You have not shown a demonstrated capacity to, to another person that they would give you money for that skill. Therefore, you've got a talent and a passion and a conscience, but you've got no branding and marketing. Branding is becoming known. Marketing is distribution of a message to a, to a very specific people. A lot of people confuse these. Branding is, I don't even know you. How could I do business with you if I don't know you? What, what, what would make me even think about doing business with you if I don't know you? Nothing. Marketing is, you can translate my problem into some type of profit for you. Okay? So the question becomes, how? until you get clear on this, let's go back to something that Wayne said earlier. You can't, it's hard to get in front of people until you know what you have. And, and how you can solve a problem for them. Because if you do, it's, it, it's it, it, you don't really have the nuts and bolts of what you have and how to help people do it. Okay? I activate prey drive in people. Now, who would want their prey drive activated? A lot of people on planet Earth, a lot of managers, a lot of CEOs, a lot of people that are in selling. So I could say, hey, man, if I activated the prey drive and got your people a 40% increase, would it be valuable to you? If I helped you make 20 million more dollars, would you mind sharing a million of it with me? And the answer is no. So this is a skill. This is a talent that I have. I can't cook. I'm geographically illiterate. Can't fix a car. But I can't activate prey drive in people. And I can't take complicated concepts and make them simple. So what I do is I go out there and I become known. How do I become known? I do videos. I, I do podcasts. I do webinars. I hit my database. I do television shows. I do whatever I can to become known. That's branding. Then I market to people a direct message. If I could help your people do this, would that be valuable? If I gave them a selling system, would it be valuable? If I taught them how to follow up, would it be valuable? Okay. So, so what I'm trying to show you today is we got to get out of the business of selling a technology and we got to get into the business of selling a skill set. Money doesn't buy you freedom, folks. Skills buys you freedom. Okay. And until we have clarity, that's called the fundamental relationship. This is what I have. And this is how it could help them. This is what I have. This is how it can solve a problem for them. And every time you follow up with a potential customer, with a potential client, I call them clients versus customers. Because if you look up the definition of a client, there's a fiduciary responsibility to do what's in the best interest of that client to help them get where they're trying to go. That means when they tell you they don't need a next Steve system, you say, no, 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 no. I understand why you don't think you need it. But I've done a poor job of explaining it because you do need it. You have a fiduciary responsibility for a client to put your arms around them and care about them and help them be successful. And that's a different relationship than you have with the customer. McDonald's has customers. Walmart has customers. They do not have clients. Okay? Because it's a transaction. It's not transformation. Wayne, I'm getting all fired up here, man. I'm getting all excited now. Okay? Now, here's my point. 
somebody calls in my office today and they say, look, I'm just going to buy one of your books, coach, for $9.99 in the shipping. I have a fiduciary responsibility to say, Wayne, you could buy one of my books, but it ain't nothing. It ain't nothing like being coached by me for a year. Now, that book's not going to change your life. It's, it's a good book. I wrote it. came from my brain and my experiences, but it ain't nothing compared to you being coached by me for a year. The kind of results I can get with you in a year by coaching you versus you reading that book are exponential. Why would you just buy the book versus get the coaching? I have a responsibility to Wayne to help him hit his goals. He Right? I want him to become a client. So when he says, no, I don't need it. No, I'm just going to start here. I have a responsibility to say, no, no, no. I got to give it to you. It's like saying, hey, I, I'm thirsty and I need some water, but I only need one glass. And I come back to you and say, well, you could drink one glass of water, but it's not going to fill you up like you need. You need 60 ounces a day. And I could sell you the one glass today, but I really need to sell you the 60 ounce. I really need to sell you a whole case of water so you could drink the ounces every single day to get the fluid that you need. I'm not doing my job as a salesperson of just selling you one glass of water. That's a transaction. That don't that helps you for a minute. I'm doing my job and I say, Wayne, I could sell you this, but I'd like to sell you a whole case because you're going to need this water. You're going to be drinking six of these a day, man, not one. One gets you through the next hour. You need one an hour. Okay. So that's what a good salesperson does because they have a fiduciary responsibility to put their arms around a client, help them get to a better place. Okay. Now I'm going to stop there. <clears throat> and uh, today's, today's was about activating your prey drive. That's all it's about. We haven't got into selling yet. We're going to get into explaining your services. We're going to get into prospecting every day. We're going to get into follow-up. We're going to get into extraction of referral. And we're going to get into being a person of interest. If I were coaching you for a year, this is what I would coach you on. And I guarantee you, we're going to find money somewhere in one of these things, okay? So what I need you to do is just show up on each of your coaching sessions. Just show up. Make sure you're here. If you, if you need to talk to me or do a strategy session with me, email me at coach at coachbert.com coach at coachbert.com. If you want to talk about coaching, personal coaching, individual coaching, um, whatever, email me at coach at coachbert.com. I do boot camps. I do events. Uh, I travel around the country. I'll be in Dallas, Texas, speaking to about 400 insurance people, uh, top, top insurance people this Friday and Saturday. And so I'll be in Scottsdale. I've just, I'm signing a big contract with an insurance company in Scottsdale. I'll be out there once a quarter. And I don't mind going to Scottsdale at all. They didn't have to. I almost, I almost gave them money just to hire me as their coach. So I'd go out to Scottsdale and stay once a quarter. Okay. Now, here's my point. I want to help you. And I can't help you till you commit. Once you commit, I'm not going to let you fail. That's one of my greatest closing lines. So what questions do you have from today's session? Joe, I like to scare them on the first session to see who comes back. I have a question, Coach. Um, on your A and B, is it possible to have two Bs at a time? That's a great question. Here's the deal. The brain, what you're really doing there, like my company, my coaching business has a B. My real estate company has a B. But I only have one B for my coaching company. Okay. And that's a single tangible outcome. And the reason I need that is because I don't care how we get to $6 million, Michelle. We could sell 47 coaching programs, 1,000 books. Uh, it don't matter to me how we get there, what products we sell. I just got, I just want to get us to that top line revenue number. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, so I just have one B. Uh, I'm not saying you can't have two Bs, but I think you got to be careful. I like having different divisions. So I have different divisions and they all lead to that one B. So I got a publishing division, marketing division, health division, accounting division, and we help business owners in all of these areas. And I, and those numbers, I'm taking all those divisions, trying to drive them toward hitting that big number of six million. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you. Good question. Most people don't have a B for their life. <laughs> where, what are you, where are you going? Where are you trying to be? What, are, you know, my goal is to be the, the modern day Covey, you know, Covey got to uh, 250 million at his company, probably more. So how do I get there? How do I, the, the, these are very tangible outcomes for me. Any other questions? Now, what's the takeaway from today? Uh, YouTube. Yeah, quick question. Yep. And Wayne, you mentioned YouTube. What I want you to do on YouTube is search, uh, uh, search Coach Michael. My mother spelled my name a little bit different. She had me when she was 16, so I don't know if she couldn't spell yet or she just wanted me to be different. Okay. But Coach Michael Burt on YouTube, and I got thousands of videos. 
Okay. Uh, here's what I would do. I, I think you need to be watching. I think you need to be training 20 minutes a day. Okay. And I, I typically watch about 20 minutes of educational content in the morning. I watch a 20 minute sermon, 20 minutes of educational content while I'm fixing my hair and getting ready. Okay. So, so I, I really encourage you to get in there, dig in with me on YouTube, start watching my content. Um, let's see, transition face to face to Zoom and the COVID. Yeah, it, it is different. I'm a face to face person, Elizabeth, to be honest with you. I love face to face. Like, I'm so happy that I'm now back to doing events. I actually did events uh, throughout the whole period of COVID. Uh, I live in Tennessee, and in Tennessee, we have a very pro business uh, governor and mayor in my city. So I was able to do events. I continue doing events. Um, I go to the number one health doctor. I would consider one of the number one health doctors in the country in Houston, Texas. Uh, he has me on what's called ivermectin. Ivermectin is a prescribed thing that shows like a 99.9% .9 chance of you not being able to contract COVID. So I actually take that as part of my vitamin regimen every single week to keep me when I'm around so many people to keep me healthy. And I also the, the vitamins I take are customized to my body uh, to help me play at a very high level and have very high levels of energy. Now I do invest about 10,000 a year in that. And I, and my wife also goes there. That's about 10,000. So we invest about 20,000 a year by going to a, a doctor that I consider one of the top doctors in the world with a specific focus on, on non-pharmaceutical drugs. So he does not believe, he believes on getting on the path to health and wellness minus the use of pharmaceutical drugs. So uh, that helps me play at a high level and hopefully keep me healthy when I'm out in the world and being around a lot of people. And all I can tell you is my results, folks. I hadn't been sick, okay? And I've probably seen 5,000, 10,000 people in the last six months. So they've hugged me, they've kissed me, they've cried on me, they've shaken my hand. I don't know what to tell you. So either he's doing something right or, or something. All I can go on is the results, okay? So I'm thankful to have somebody like that guy in my life. Okay, what are your hobbies? I don't have any hobbies, man. Can't you tell? Uh, I don't fish. I don't hunt. I don't play golf. I do. My, my favorite hobby is traveling. I do love travel and I love uh, re good real estate. So I spend, uh, I buy m millions of dollars of real estate and I use that real estate to do retreats at. I write a lot of books. So I have a cool lodge in Tennessee that's 8,000 square feet. I have a, a nine bedroom house in Florida. And uh, I have a 9,000 square foot greatness factory in Nashville, and we are licensing those greatness factories around the world. Miami and Houston will be next. And uh, so I have an affinity for good real estate. So I use the profits from my coaching business to build wealth through real estate. Um, and that's, that's probably the closest thing to my hobby uh, that I have. Right, good question. Do you have a greatness factory in New York? And where? New York. Not yet. Uh, basically, the, the way these work is that there's a licensee. So they, they license the concept and then we partner and I bring that to that area. Okay. And a greatness factory is a cool destination location that has podcast studios, uh, dream foundries, auditoriums, um, place to work. It's like kind of like we work on steroids, but it has coaching development. It's a feeder system. So business people work there. So we have tenants that work here every day. We have high energy. It's a really, really cool, a uh, really, really cool space. Uh, it's kind of my part, part of my legacy. So uh, I, I would love to have one in New York. Uh, I, I, I'm, I want 50 of these around the country in the next couple of years. So we're off to a good start with three up and go, getting up and going, but uh, I'm looking for people who want to have one there. Maybe you, Brianna. Maybe. Okay. Okay, Cody, that's a great question. How do I just reach out to me and let's talk about this? I have what's called a hit list. Um, I have a very specific selling system we're going to be getting into. Yeah, I write about that in the book, Legacy Selling. So I get into targeted hit list, farm club, red zones, all of these things. And we will cover that over the six, over the six month cycle. Okay. And that's what I coach people on. So it's not random or sporadic. It's not all pipe up, pop up psychology. I do want to activate your prey drive and show you how to activate it. But once we get past that, then it's very tactical. What I'm going to teach you. The next session will change your life. Cause I'm going to teach you how to explain your service. When you get on the phone with people, uh, I'm really, really going to show you how to explain your services in a world-class level. So Cody, will you email me at coach at coachbird.com? And we'll schedule a session. Yeah, got you, Coach Burt. Yep.
coach at coachbert.com, B-U-R-T. All right, this has been a good start, folks. Thank you for being coachable, okay? Um, Lynn Ray, one more question. Let's see, do you have books, PowerPoint, in the M? Uh, yes, I do have that, and I will actually share this PowerPoint with uh, Joe Hauser, and she can send it out to the group. Okay, so I don't, I don't have, I don't have a problem at all sharing the PowerPoint. So you can go through the PowerPoint with me. Our homework, great question. Our homework is going to be to start the cycle. There's two things. Great question. Is going to be start the cycle of activating your prey drive by 8 a.m. in the morning, by finding your rhythm in the four dimensions of your nature by increasing your prospecting to two hours a day and by not mixing your activities. Okay, I do not want you mixing your activities together. And I don't care if you prospect one hour in the morning, one hour in the afternoon. Okay, I, I just want you prospecting at least two hours a day minimum. Okay, and we'll get into the selling aspect and how to get better at the selling as we go. Okay, all right, good first session, guys. Have a great day. Thank you for being so coachable. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.